Timbers defender Zarek Valentin. Zarek, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Before we get into the Houston match, all the on the field stuff, I want to talk about Sunday night, not Saturday night, mm. but Sunday night at the annual Stand Together Banquet. Zarek <laughs> Valentin was named the team's community MVP. Zarek, you're the first two-time winner of that award. What does it mean to you? Um, you know, it's a huge honor um, to be part of an organization and uh, just a city that embraces um, the community as much as Portland does. My mom instilled volunteering at us at a young age. We, we would, you know, spend nights at the women's shelter, sleeping there overnight, and um, that was just kind of ingrained in me, and especially with my fiance Liz and stuff. We love giving back to the community in every way possible, and um, it was just exciting, and, and it's such an honor to be up there with, uh, with Emily, who's done some incredible things as well. You, if we stick on Stand Together right now, you were up on stage as well to present some light-hearted awards to, to some teammates. Nobody seems safe. Giovanni Savarese even got mm. called up on stage. Was there any reservations about calling out some of these guys as well as your manager to bring them up on stage? Um, a little bit. Uh, obviously, my uh, consecutive game streak might be in, in, in jeopardy <laughs> after that one, but... Um, it's all in good fun. Um, I think it just proves the fact that we have such a good culture within the Timbers uh, from top to bottom, from you know head coach down to the players, and, and everyone within the organization is, is able to have a joke and laugh. And uh, <laughs> biggest uh, nod goes to Steve Clark for uh, you know having the uh, Teammate of the Decade Award. I think that's uh, good for him. But, uh, Since 2015. Exactly. But it's just been, uh, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a great example of the, the incredible culture we have, and uh, hopefully I, I get a chance to do it next year. You talk about the, the minutes here, consecutive games. It, it might be broken now after bringing the manager up on stage. <laughs> but, yeah, have played in every single match so far this year for the Timbers. How important has that been for you and freshness in the legs? You don't seem to be wary at all. Yeah, it's, it's one of these things where I'll never, ever complain about playing. Um, obviously, in the past, you know, coaches' decisions and injuries have kept me out of the game, so I'll never, ever complain. And, um, you know, one thing I always try to do, and I hope anyone who watches me will say this guy gives a hundred and thousand percent every time he's on the field no matter what no matter where I'm on the field and it's one of those things where I just take a lot of pride in in taking care of my body and doing whatever's necessary hydrating uh, to a fault at times <laughs> yeah. um, whether that's going to the bathroom two or three times in the middle of the night to make sure that muscle <laughs> stay stay ready but it's one of those things where I, I'm excited and I love the squad and I love being out there and and you know just putting on the jersey Squad's been playing well, obviously, a uh, win over Colorado on Saturday night. Now you guys uh, get ready to, to go back on the road. Um, let's talk about the, the Colorado game. Three unbeaten now as well. What, what's been going right for the team? I think it's, uh, it's, it's getting a little bit of cohesion. Um, obviously, when you have some people getting back in the lineup like, you know, Jorge and Reggie, you know, that provides a lot of stability on that side. Obviously, Timbers fans know that they've done decent in the past together. So <laughs> uh, that connection is something big for them. And um, I think it's just a, a collective mentality, again, that we've worked on, and obviously we've had some positive conversations after losing a few games in a row, kind of just getting back to the basics of what made us great throughout that 15-game stretch. And I think that if we keep going, we'll, we'll hopefully peak at the right time, uh, leading into what hopefully will be a, a playoff uh, appearance for us. Saturday night, the 2-0 win over Colorado. Both assists in that match by Sebastian Blanco, your teammate, who was named the MLS Player of the Week for his performance in that match. He's been great this year, obviously. What's your perspective on, on Sebastian Blanco, what he's meant to the team. Seb has been great, and if you and if you look at it, he's done it on on both sides, and and kind of been you know someone who's really come into his own this year. I think if you ask a lot of players, um, you know he's been one of our better players for us, and whether that's playing wide a little bit deeper at times, he's been. He's been someone that's been very reliable, and a lot of times it takes foreign players just a little bit to adapt to the league and the travel, and it's, and it's different, and we understand that, but, you know, it, it, we're happy that he's on our team. A player who meant a lot to the club before, and he's back for his second spell, Jorge Villafania. For you, the competition coming in now where, like we said, you, you've been a main feature this season, you've played very well. For him coming into the team, what was your thought process of everything? Well, initially, he's, he's a good buddy of mine. Yeah. Uh, most people don't know that. We were uh, together my rookie year in, in Chivas. We actually played together on the wing. I was left back, he was left mid. Um, so we spend time together. So we've known each other for a while, and I requested that he sits next to me in the locker room just because we can, you know, laugh about the old Chivas days and, and have a good one. We played youth nationals team together for years. So uh, initially, my first thought was we're getting a good player. And ultimately, when you bring in good players to teams, everyone has to raise their level. I need to play better. All the other outside backs have to play better, and it's just going to make the team better going forward. And ultimately, I just tried to basically prepare myself and try to separate myself from every other outside back, whether that was my communication on the field, maybe a little bit of my passing and things like that, but just trying to play within my own abilities and separate myself and then, you know, let the rest up to the coaching staff to make their decisions. Coming up against you, uh, say, like, an Elise is just lacking over this last stretch of games. Do you still have to give respect? 
to such attacking players, and how do you go about giving respect as a defender? Oh, I mean, the, the, this group is, is very dynamic. Obviously, they haven't had the best string of games, but when they play at home and they look at the schedule and they look at the amount of games left, they're probably going to say, this is a game where we need to get three points and we're going to come out and give everything we have. And ultimately, they have shown in the past that they're very good at home, and they're also very dynamic, quick, fast. These guys are powerful runners that can score goals. So as much as you know they haven't been getting results recently, they're probably going to say, oh, well, they might take us a little bit easily. So then they can come out and surprise us. But as a team, we need to go there and be weary of them at, at all times. And it'll be interesting because with the conditions and things like that, you know, maybe they also don't want the ball at times. Maybe they'll say, you know what, we'll let them have the ball and try to catch them on counters and be a little bit you know, compact since their defense has been riddled with injuries. But again, I always talk about playing our game and playing our style of football. We're going to be tough to beat no matter whether we're in Houston, Dallas, Mars, or Atlanta. <laughs>